NASCAR might be heading to Long Beach sooner than we expect, and Roger Penske is pissed. Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your bike. Hell yeah! Woo! One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Woo! Yeah! Fanny Series champion right here. Nice work, boss. Hell yeah, guys! <laughs> That's awesome! I drink the beer. What do you think, Cole? I'm fucking ready. I did not think I was going to be saying this this soon, but welcome on back into the Pit Pass, your personal pass for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I'm Alan Bailey. Yes, the show has a name. It is no longer the Untitled NASCAR Xfinity Series show, and I'm very excited about that. It just so happens to be the name of the show that originally started my career back in college. I'm very excited to bring this show back in this new form. So make sure that you mash that subscribe button before we get on into everything so that you do not miss a video. And of course, log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I'm just going to be moving my microphone the whole show. Don't mind me. But lots to talk about. Kyle Larson winning out at Coda. A lot of beef between Parker Kligerman and Sage Karam. You had SVG and Austin Hill beef. You have the NASCAR to Long Beach rumors. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be racing in Xfinity race this year. Uh, Richmond's coming up this weekend, and we have your hot takes as well as a rundown of where some of our superstars for the Xfinity series finished out at Coda and where they are in the points heading into Richmond this weekend. So let's not waste any time. The big story, Kyle Larson nabbing the victory with a dramatic last lap pass out at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. It was a pretty emotional win for Hendrick Motorsports overall. You look at it, Hendrick has a massive history with the number 17. The late Ricky uh, Hendrick, Rick Hendrick's son, used to race that number in the truck series and in the Xfinity series before moving into a manager role over at Hendrick Motorsports. And unfortunately, he was one of the 10 people who was on that Hendrick plane when it crashed near Martinsville, Virginia in 2004. So this is the 20-year anniversary of their death, unfortunately. And I think for Hendrick Motorsports, bringing the 17 back to the track is very therapeutic. It is their way of honoring and remembering Ricky Hendrick, and that alone we should respect. It was a very close race right there at the very end. It honestly looked like it was SVG's. I thought it was going to be his, honestly, until Austin Hill decided, well, if I can't win, nobody's going to win. I don't have a teammate that's handing me wins anymore, and I need more wins because I need to prove my validation and be good again. me. Austin Hill's a crybaby. You need to understand that about Austin Hill. He expects everything handed to him clearly, and he's the guy who doesn't care. He will literally run through anybody to try to get a victory, including his own teammates, and then when it happens to him, Oh, I'm so sad. I didn't win. Me. Except he did the cardinal rule, the cardinal sin that you do not do in motorsports. If you are stupid enough to try to move somebody out of the way for a victory... Do it with not enough time left in the race to get it paid back to you, which is exactly what Austin Hill didn't do. He did it heading into the first turn out at Circuit of the Americas with plenty of laps to go. So, of course, SVG caught him, chased him down, and paid him back. He got SVG'd, and deservedly so. And I love that he got out of the car and played the whole, Oh, I don't know what happened. I'm just a victim. I didn't hit him. And then midway through the interview, he backpedaled just a little bit. Austin, you can't have it both ways, pal. You can't push him and not push him. And I don't know what happened. And I know what happened. We all saw the video. We have the data from your car. We can see that you throttled up, broke late, and shoved SVG through that first corner. Do not play innocent victim here like you always do. You did this. And guess what? You didn't win because of it. And I'm here for it. I hate that SVG uh, was dinged for course cutting and because of that finished way in the back. Um, he came home, unfortunately, 27th. Just not cool. Not cool at all. SVG falling to 14th in the point standings, 114 points out. He's right on the cusp of making the postseason at the moment if it were to start now. So I like where he is, but he's got to capitalize on races like this and go out there and win and lock himself in. I thought he was going to win today. Him, AJ Allmendinger, and the 17 uh, were all very strong over this last weekend out at Circuit of the Americas. I'm not saying SVG gave up his one chance at a victory, but he gave up a chance at a victory, unfortunately, um, mostly due to some idiot running through him, honestly. 
But that was not the only drama happening on track out at Circuit of the Americas. There's always a little bit of drama whenever you go to a road course, whenever you go to the racetrack, there's drama. But Parker Kligerman and Sage Karam got into it. And because there was a stack up and Sage Karam's an idiot, he decided to hide behind a security guard, a team member, uh, and then run away. It's really easy to talk tough when there's like three people between you and the person you're talking tough to and you're running away. So Parker Kligerman standing his ground, pleading his case right there and Sage Karam just running away. Oh, yeah, 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 no, it's all on you, it's all on you, it's all on you. Ah! Like, what the heck was that, man? Sincerely, like, that just was, oh, that was, that was chicken shit. Like, straight up chicken shit. Like, that's what that was. If you're going to confront somebody, actually confront them if you're scared of them. And Sage has a good foot on Parker. I mean, just stand your ground if you believe it. Or if you're just going to talk trash and come off looking tough, just go home. The end. And that's exactly what he did. Looking at some of the finishers out at Circuit of the Americas, Cole Custard uh, coming home fourth, uh, moves up to third in the point standings. Uh, right now, 30 points out of the points lead. Uh, not a bad run for him. He's the guy who's always been kind of the road course ringer before AJ Allmendinger, before SVG got back in the series. Um, He's the guy who I think is going to finish third or top five at all these road courses, and he's quietly going to have a championship year without us noticing, just like last year. We already talked about Parker Kligerman coming home fifth out at Circuit of the Americas, moves up to seventh in the point standings, 75 points out. Locking yourself in with a victory is preferred, but he's in a really good spot in the postseason right now. The number two of Jesse Love. Uh, sixth out at Circuit of the Americas, moves up to fourth in the standings, 56 points out of the points lead. Jesse Love is just having a quietly consistent year, and that is dangerous because he is a very young driver that I think doesn't really have anything to prove at this point of his career. He's going out there and showing he is the phenom, the superstar that we believe him to be. And honestly... Give him a little bit more time on track and let him develop those skills and take those rookie stripes off. Oh boy, he's going to be dangerous and he'll be in the Cup Series before not. And I can't wait for Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin to sign him away from RCR. Chandler Smith in the 81 coming home eighth out at Circuit of the Americas. Second in the points, only nine points out of that 21 car of Austin Hill. I mean, honestly, Chandler Smith, I think he's going to be taking over that 19 car next year, if not the year after. I really do believe that Chandler Smith is the guy being eyed to take over that 19 for Martin Truex Jr. When Martin Truex Jr. announces his retirement, whether that's at the end of the 2024 season or the 2025 season, mark my words, I do think that Chandler Smith, because he is a talented race car driver, because he is young, because he is in the Toyota pipeline, because he has his own sponsors that come with him, which is something Toyota needs, I do think that Chandler Smith's going to be in that 19 by... I would say 2025, 2026 maybe at the very latest, but probably as soon as next year. A.J. Allmendinger with kind of a disappointing day out at Circuit of the Americas. Whenever A.J. Allmendinger gets in an Xfinity car and doesn't win, it's a disappointing day uh, on a road course. And he finishes 10th out at Coda, which is, by A.J. Allmendinger standards, really bad. So I, I don't know why they faded so badly right there at the end. It, just disappointment all the way around. But he is 10th in the point standings. Uh, excuse me, finishes 10th out at Circuit of the Americas, up to 6th in the point standings, 60 points out of the points lead at the moment. It. I mean, just quietly, you got to build, 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 build on this. And if I'm AJ Allmendinger, I got to go out there and win a road course or a uh, oval race sometime this season to lock myself into the point standings. The number 15 of Haley Deegan in her first road course race in an Xfinity car uh, coming home 23rd. Not bad considering she qualified 35th, I want to say. It's really hard to get around cars on a road course and work your way through the field, especially if you're a rookie. Respectable, quiet day. I don't remember hearing her name on the broadcast a whole lot because, you know, she's a rookie. No offense to her. And that's the kind of day you want to have when you're a rookie. And 
respectable, honestly. She's up to 26 in the point standings, 171 points out. She's rebuilding. She is definitely in that learning building mode, and baby steps forward is what she's doing right now, and at least she's moving in the right direction. Sheldon Creed in the 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota, coming home 32nd out at Circuit of the Americas. Just simply not good. There's no way around that. Uh, it falls to 10th in the point standings, 87 points out of the points lead. When you're in an, uh, a, a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota and you're going backwards, that's a bad look. That's a really bad look. I don't know if he's in a multi-year deal or if it was a one-year deal, but either way, he's got to pick up the pace and he's got to figure something out because that 18 car should be winning races. It should be contending for top fives and wins week in and week out. And he's finishing 32nd. Not a good look. And now that we have talked about everything that we saw out at Circuit of the Americas, let's actually talk about the reason you're here. The reason you clicked on this video NASCAR to Long Beach. Yes, Racer is reporting that NASCAR is in talks with the city of Long Beach to perhaps take over the contract from IndyCar and actually hold races down on the beach, the street course in Long Beach, California. And also in the same report, it appears that Roger Penske and the Penske Entertainment Group has been trying to stop this process, trying to stop NASCAR from coming out to Long Beach. Now, does this necessarily mean that IndyCar and the other series that race with IndyCar out at Long Beach are going to be shut out of the event altogether moving forward? Potentially? Time will tell. And whenever city council members are involved, it's very political. It is very delicate and toxic and the possibility of things changing are always there. I think that NASCAR down to Long Beach would be really great for the 2024 season to, or the 2025 season, I should say, to kind of fill the gap of Southern California in the uh, NASCAR market. But at the same time, I don't know, man. It just feels weird. It feels very weird that this happens and that Penske's so against this. If I'm Roger Penske, this is only going to help me out because NASCAR can help pick up some of the cost of building the racetrack and the facilities and security and officials, et cetera, et cetera, and help alleviate some of the business and the financial burdens that falls to IndyCar and the organization. But at the same time, let's be honest, you have NASCAR and IndyCar, two very different on-track racing products with two very different fan bases. No disrespect to IndyCar or NASCAR fans, However, there are more NASCAR fans in this country than IndyCar fans. That is a statistical fact that is irrefutable, meaning chances are the NASCAR race will sell out. Probably not that many people will go to the IndyCar race. Even if you do a double header, it's probably not going to be good lucratively for IndyCar. And I guess we can now officially call this the downturn, the downfall of IndyCar, thanks to Roger Penske. It just seems like everything that's been happening over the course of the last year or so has its highs. It's almost like one step forward, three steps back with Penske in charge over there at, at IndyCar. And a lot of the team owners and organizers within IndyCar say that Roger Penske needs to sell the series. Andretti called for him to sell the series recently. And... It just feels murky, and this feels like maybe a nail in the coffin for Penske getting out of the IndyCar business. As somebody who is sitting not that far from Long Beach right now, locals have kind of a mixed feeling about IndyCar and the Grand Prix happening in Long Beach. Some of them absolutely love it. They're motorsports fans. They embrace it. They love it. They look forward to it every year. And there are locals in Long Beach who despise when the race comes into town. They hate this time of the year. They hate the setup. They hate the crowds. They hate everything about it. And I can respect that. It is, I don't want to call it a nuisance, but it is a disturbance in normal life. And the one thing that all Californians, Southern Californians and people from Los Angeles absolutely hate, anything that adds to traffic. And this event adds to traffic locally. I'm not saying it's a deal breaker. I'm saying it's an annoyance as a local. But for me personally, it's worth the annoyance because I get a really cool race almost literally in my backyard. And a lot of people view it that way. But others wish it would go away and never come back to Long Beach. And is that a possibility? I highly doubt it. The city absolutely loves when the series comes to town because there is an influx of local business revenue that's fed into the city and a lot of people come down to Long Beach from all over the country to watch this race. That they love. They do not love the cleanup and the road construction and everything that comes with a street course race. But overall, I do think that NASCAR 
could put on a pretty decent show out at Long Beach. I do think that it could handle uh, the actual race uh, very nicely. The thing that I question is the paddock area. If you're going to potentially do a doubleheader with IndyCar and NASCAR, where do you put all those extra haulers? There is a lot more cars that race NASCAR than IndyCar, so there's going to be more trailers. And space is already for a premium in the Long Beach area when the Grand Prix is in town. So I don't think an IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader is possible. Maybe this weekend IndyCar, the next weekend NASCAR type situation, but even that feels kind of murky at best. And it does lead to the fans needing to choose between going to a NASCAR race or going to an IndyCar race. And locally, I will tell you, most people will pick the NASCAR race. So yes, Penske needs, wants to stop this from going through. But if NASCAR comes to the city of Long Beach and says, hey, we will pay you more money. Hey, we will bring more fans in. Long Beach is going to be really foolish to go with IndyCar versus going with NASCAR. So I don't know. This is a big, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. But I'm intrigued by it, honestly. You can go ahead and let me know what you think about NASCAR to Long Beach potentially coming about in the next few years in the comments down below. Uh, something else that I wanted to talk about, something that came out last week when we had our, our break, uh, was the fact that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has renewed with Hellman's and will be in the number 88 Chevy out at Bristol for the night race later this year. Knew it was coming. I mean, Dale frankly said last year, can't wait to come back next year. And yet when the announcement was made, for some reason, we all acted like it was a massive surprise and a shocker. But I love it. I wish Dale Jr. would run more short track races in the Xfinity Series. He's a team owner. He has the cars. He has the personnel. Do it. But I see why he doesn't want to. But the fact that he was so competitive at Bristol really gets me excited for him going back to Bristol uh, this year uh, for potentially winning the race. Just keep a fire extinguisher ready, guys, just in case. Now, one of my favorite times of the show that uh, I often look forward to and sometimes hate. It's a little bit of a mixed bag. Let's get to your hot takes, where we open up the comments down below and hear from you right now. We will start with this one. 21 minutes of not talking about the best race at Coda this weekend, the Xfinity race. Pretty sure we just talked about Coda in, in like a lot. Like a lot. Yes, if you listen to, if you watch Shifting Gears uh, that came out on Monday, no, we didn't talk about it too much because I said in the show, Pit Pass is coming out on Wednesday. We will talk about it on Wednesday's show. What did we just do? Thank you for listening and watching. I appreciate you. Just waiting for the SVG special at Coda. His ability to conserve tires until the last sort of 15 laps when he turns up the wick and passes people like they're parked, like he did at Chicago. Best example of this was Sandown Sprint Race a week after he broke his collarbone and ribs, qualified 17th, and went on to win the race. SVG's a badass. I don't need to... St I, th that's obvious. The sky is blue. Grass is green. I mean, c come on. If, if you doubt this man's driving abilities, you clearly haven't been paying attention. He knows how to drive a race car. However, he clearly used up his stuff. He's still a rookie with this car. We cannot expect him to go out there and win every road course race or go out and win the championship this year. He is a rookie. He still has a rookie stripe on that back bumper and will for the rest of the year. I do not expect wins of him. I really do not. But he has been impressing me with top fives in places I didn't think he was going to get top fives. Yes, that might be circumstances, but I think that's veteran racecraft knowledge playing out at its best. And I do think he's going to be one of those guys we have to keep an eye on once the playoffs start, because I do think he's going to make the playoffs. But I don't expect him to make the final four, and I don't expect him, even the round of eight feels like a little bit of a stretch, because... Everybody else kind of knows what they're doing, and they've been doing it for years and years and years in this series. SVG hasn't. He's only been doing it for five weeks, six weeks in this series. Give him time. Let him develop. We still don't know what his plans are for 2025. Just relax. Hot take. If Coda doesn't return to the NASCAR schedule in 2025, then just go back to Road America or get Rockingham renovated enough to put it back on the schedule. Okay, I would really, 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 really like to see NASCAR go back to Rockingham. If you're unfamiliar with this track, uh, it's Rockingham. Well, actually, it's it's known as The Rock um, in Rockingham, North Carolina. 
It's a really, really fun racetrack. Really fun racetrack. Very unique. I wish we could literally pick it up and put it in Los Angeles. Sincerely, because that racetrack here in Southern California would do phenomenally well. And maybe NASCAR's thinking about that. I'm just saying that repaved design's not finalized yet. They're looking at models. They're working with iRacing. Give them time. I do think that NASCAR needs to go back to Road America. I think that that is a phenomenal racetrack. I loved the summer vibes of camping and hanging out at the racetrack and watching a good race. I think that NASCAR made a massive mistake getting away from that racetrack. I think at the very least, the truck and the Xfinity series need to head back there, at least for a race. Just, just in the middle of the summer, it's the perfect place to do it do it. And that area deserves a race. But I also simultaneously think that Circuit of the Americas does belong on the NASCAR calendar for the Truck Xfinity and Cup Series because that facility is phenomenal. It truly is. The on-track racing is fine. You have a lot of slow corners, very wide, very flat racetrack. uh, So you don't get these crazy bankings through the corners. However, We need to acknowledge that that area, Texas, the Austin, Texas area, is very important for sponsors, and that racetrack is very important for those sponsors. So going there is important, and I think we're looking at that again next year. Now, coming up this weekend, we are heading out to Richmond. Hmm. Yeah. After what we saw at Bristol in the Cup Series, I'm like optimistic for the Cup race. But for the Xfinity race, I I don't know. I I truly don't know. The Xfinity cars are hands down the best racing in NASCAR right now, better than Cup. Oh, not even close to Truck Series. Like, the Truck Series is a distant, distant third right now. But how will this, this track race? I don't know. This track, to me, should be a night race, but people are saying, oh, yeah, no racing during the daytime. That's better for this race. I don't know. I Show me the evidence of that. I, I, mm, I don't know. Either way, we're going to find out Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. So mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. Shifting gears every Monday and Friday here on the channel with the Pit Pass every Wednesday. Kind of splitting the week in half for us here. Uh, And of course, uh, you can always log on to arnrace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. We are still trying to figure out what we're doing with Holler Talk uh, with Overton Speed Shop. Going to do something. Just not sure when. Still talking about it internally. Going to go ahead and figure that out. We're definitely not doing uh, any more live streams during the race. That was a four-hour broadcast, and we were all exhausted afterwards. So uh, maybe a Sunday night live show, maybe a Monday morning roundtable discussion. We're not sure yet. Still trying to figure that out. So either way, mash that subscribe button so that you come on back for that one. But for the Pit Pass, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.